Thanks for dropping by for my daily devotions for July the 1st, 2023. How did that happen? Here we are, July the 1st, 2023. We're going to look at Romans chapter 7. It's an interesting chapter <laughs> and critical. Matthew chapter 10, Psalm 19, and Micah chapter 2. And I was thinking about some stuff we read a few days ago. And... Um, it's Revelation 22, verse 16. Nope, that's not it. 17. That's the verse I want. Revelation 22, 17. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who says, come. And let him who hears say, come. He's talking to the people listening to this. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Who's the spirit? The spirit's the Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit? Spirit's all over the place. But specifically, the Spirit inhabits the life of the Christian. And the Spirit is inhabiting the people in what's the church, the people of God. Who is the bride? The bride is the church, the, the body of Christ, the people of God. They become the bride of Christ at the day of the Lord. And they are now. They're his bride. Let him who hears say, come. All the people listen to this say, come. To the lost, come, come to Jesus, okay? Whoever is thirsty, let him come. Whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of the life. What he's saying is the message of the church, the message of the spirit, the message of the folks who are listening to the book of Revelation, the message of the people of God, to the rest of the world is come to him for your thirst, spiritual thirst to be quenched. Come to God to the Lord for a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and experience salvation through him. Massive message, massive message. Hang on to that. And um, <clears throat> let's take a minute and pray. Then we'll jump into our reading for the day. Father, speak to us through Romans 7 and um, Matthew 10, Psalm 19 and Micah chapter 2. Change our lives by what we hear from you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 7. Do you not know, brothers, for I was speaking to men who know the law, that the law has authority over man only as long as he lives? For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. So then, if she marries another man while her husband is still alive, she's called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law and is not an adulteress, even though she marries another man. And so, my brothers, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit for God. For when we were controlled by the sinful nature, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our bodies, so that we bore fruit for death. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit, and not in the old way of the written code. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. Indeed, I would not have known what sin was except through the law, for I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, do not covet. But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of covetous desire, for apart from law, sin is dead. Once I was alive apart from law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that every commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. For sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, deceived me, and through the commandment put me to death. So then the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then become death to me? By no means. But in order that sin might be recognized as sin, it produced death in me through what was good, so that through the commandment sin might become utterly sinful." For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do I do not do, and what I hate I do. You know what he's saying? We, we're saved, okay? We're still sinners, and there are times when we can prove it. We do the thing we don't want to do, verse 16. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good, because it's divine sin, Okay? As it is, it is no longer I myself doing it, but sin living in me. I know that, the, that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. 
The evil I do not want to do, this I keep doing. Now I do not, now if I do what I do not want to do, it's no longer I who do it, but sin living in me that does it. Happens, doesn't it? So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. What's the point? We save people, keep bumbling through life and sinning. That's the point. We're, we're all sinners. We're all sinners saved by grace. We should be getting better, but we do stumble off into sin. From t If the Apostle Paul did, trust me, you and I will, and pretty certain I do from time to time. Okay, Better than I was. Lots better. And I hope you are too. You are. Matthew chapter 10. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom, of God, uh, the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. Do not take along any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Take no bag for the journey, nor extra tunic or sandals or staff, for the worker is worth his, his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person there and stay at that house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. As If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone one will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. Be on your guard against, against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account, you'll be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when, you, when they arrest you, they do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will, be, it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house is called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who, has, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men will also acknowledge me before my Father in heaven. And whoever disowns me before men, I will disown before him before my Father in heaven. 
Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. If anyone loves his father or mother more than me, he is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he's a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he's a righteous man will receive the righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple. I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. Psalm 119. No, I'm Psalm 19, not 119. We'll get to the 119th Psalm. Usually spend a couple of weeks there. It takes a long time to get through it. I go slow because it's significant. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Why? Because they're created by him. That's why. It demonstrates he, he reveals himself in his creation. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the, of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run the course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. That's the word of God in the Bible, folks. It operates, it functions, it does things. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his error? Forgiving, forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then will I be blameless, innocent of great transgressions. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Wow, powerful. Micah chapter 2. From inside, oops, wrong words. Wrong one, wrong. Dropped into Jonah somehow. Mark, Micah chapter 2. Woe to those who plan iniquity, to those who plot evil on their beds. At morning's light, they carry it out because it is in their power to do it. They covet fields and seize them and houses and take them. They defraud a man of his home, a fellow man of his inheritance. Therefore, the Lord says, I am planning disaster against this people from which you cannot save yourselves. You will no longer walk proudly, for it will be a time of calamity. In that day, men will ridicule you. They will taunt you with this mournful song. We are utterly ruined. My people's possession is divided up. He takes it from me. He assigns our fields to traitors. Therefore, you will be. there will be no one in the assembly of the Lord to divide the land by lot. Do not prophesy, their prophets say. Do not prophesy like about these things. Disgrace will not overtake us. Should it be said, O house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord angry? Does he not? Does he do such things? Do not my words do good to him whose ways are upright? Lately my people have risen up like an enemy. You strip off the rich robe from those who pass by without a care. Like men returning from battle, you drive women, the women of my people from the pleasant homes. You take away my blessing from, my, from their children forever. Get up, go away, for this is not your resting place because it is defiled. It is ruined beyond all remedy. If a liar and deceiver comes and says, I will prophesy for, for you plenty of wine and beer, but he, did just, he would be just the prophet for, his, for this people. I will surely gather all of you, O Jacob. I will, I will surely bring together the remnant of Israel to bring them together like a sheep in the pen, like a flock in its pasture. The place you throng 
with people. One who breaks open the way will not go before them. They will break open the gate and not go out. Their king will pass through it before them, the Lord at their head. Ah, the Lord has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us. Change us from the inside out by the truth we find in your word. Make us new and different because we heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.